today's video post, we're going to be talking about the relationship between gluten sensitivity and hypothyroid. I was just reading a paper that came out of the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in January of 2012 that tells us that there is an increase in need for thyroid hormones when people had atypical celiac disease. Now, what atypical celiac disease is, is an autoimmune condition where the body reacts to gluten in an autoimmune way, the body's immune system flares up and starts attacking body tissues due to this gluten sensitivity, and atypical celiac disease is one where there is no digestive symptoms. Many people think that if they have a gluten sensitivity and have celiac, that they're going to get digestive symptoms, and that's just not true. You can have celiac disease and gluten sensitivity without one speck of digestive complaint. You could have it manifesting in other areas. We'll talk about that later. What they found in this study was that when people had cili atypical celiac disease, they had a 49% increase in need for their thyroid hormones. In other words, they needed that much more medication to get an effect to regulating their TSH levels. So as opposed to just increasing hormones, and you might have found this out in your own experience that you'll need more and more as time goes on. This could be why that is happening. So the idea is if, if more and more hormones are necessary, there's a lot of different things that can occur from this situation. One being thyroid resistance, where your body's no longer listening to the thyroid hormones that are coming in. But just know that way, the way gluten is tested, don't for one second think that you don't, may not have gluten sensitivity if you have hypothyroid, because this is not the only study that's showing the relationship between hypothyroidism and gluten sensitivity. This is one of many. And when people get tested for gluten typically right now in a standard lab, they're looking at only a few markers for gluten like alpha-gliadin and transglutaminase. In fact, where there's multiple types of gliadin, alpha, gamma, omega, and others, and there's many transglutaminase enzymes. In fact, there are up to 24 different markers for gluten that can be found. And the only lab that I know of as of the recording of this video is in a lab in Arizona called Cyrex Labs. That's C-Y-R-E-X. And this lab looks at all 24 markers. So as a result, of the results of this lab, you can then make decisions on whether you should be eating gluten or not. Now, for the most part, if you have hypothyroidism, there's a 90% chance that you do have Hashimoto's, which is an immune condition. And with these people that have atypical celiac disease, they have an immune condition because there is an intimate relationship between once you have one autoimmune disease, you may start developing others. So just keep in mind that you need to get, a, a, a get tested appropriately and that the only way you're going to be tested is just through this one lab that I just talked about. And by doing so, you're going to really find out how you can start directing your lifestyle and dietary changes so that you can start feeling better. So I'd like to thank you for watching this post. I look forward to talking to you in the future, and make it a great day.